There it comes. Kimball. And Hara looked like hands, but Chris Penso immediately spread his arms wide as if to say nothing doing. No Bobby Warshaw this week, and that means two things. No corny intros, and all the opinions are correct. Welcome to Week 22's Instant Replay presented by Cheez-It. Let's get right to it. We start with the most controversial call of the weekend. Even Minnesota United head coach Adrian Heath said this 87th minute handball call on Hilarious Mabiala, thanks to video review, was, quote, dubious. The Timbers head coach, Giovanni Savarese, said he doesn't understand, quote, what exactly a PK is anymore. Sounds like Bobby Warshaw. I think referee Chris Pinso got this one right. It's a scoreless game when Mabiala decides to defend an Ico Parra header with both arms out in front of him. The only question here is whether Opara's header hits the Portland center back's arm or torso. I see arm just above the elbow, but the key in my mind is the rebound. Try to track the ball's movement with me. Ike heads it and it immediately rebounds right back into him. For that sort of rapid return, in my opinion, it has to hit the outstretched arm, which is what my naked eye saw from the jump. Now, there isn't a perfect angle. I get why someone might say it's not clear and obvious to them. It is to me, ditto for Pinto, apparently. One more from Sunday's action. This was definitely a penalty on DC United's Junior Moreno, who pulled down Casper Shabilko in the 37th minute with the Union leading 1-0. But was it denial of a clear goal scoring opportunity and a red card? Steve Birnbaum is pretty close. Maybe Moreno challenges for the ball. I said pull though, didn't I? And when you pull a guy down who's in on goal, that's gonna be dog so. Referee Armando Villarreal agreed, though it took video review to turn yellow to red. Orlando City got a big home win at Exploria Stadium, but FC Dallas might have had a chance to even the match from the spot if this had been called a penalty kick. We should all be able to agree on the fact that the cross hits Lamina Sane's hand. It may not change direction by much, but you can see, yeah, right here, the moment of contact. So, handball or no, was it deliberate from Sané? Referee Silvio Petrescu played on in the moment and went back to review at the next stoppage of play. Petrescu stuck with his original call, no PK. Producer Rich, a person who has refereed high-level soccer games before, says no handball as well. I quote, Sané's arm is up for balance, nothing deliberate there. I, a person who yells about referee calls on the internet, say, handball. Sané knows this ball is going over his head. What is he doing swinging his arm up there? That's not for balance, in my opinion at least. He may not mean to handle the ball, but I think the movement of the arm is deliberate. Sané knew he misjudged the header and there was going to be a play on the ball at the back post. He panics a little in the moment, throws his arm back, and the ball nicks off his hand. It's not a short distance between kick and arm. He has time to judge the flight of the ball. To me, it's hand to ball, not ball to hand. Even the tiniest touch changes things in that part of the field. I'd have pointed to the spot. Toronto lost 2-0 at Red Bull Arena on Saturday, but they might have been up 1-0 and cruising to a different result entirely had this 20th minute chip from Josie Altador stood. The call on the field from AR1, Oscar Mitchell Carvalho was offside. The goal was taken off the board. Was that the right call though? Not gonna lie, I have no idea. The replay angles do me almost no good here, which I assume is why we didn't see a review. In the first angle, you can't see Altador when Alejandro Pozuelo hits the pass. It looks like Josie has a jump on Tim Parker, but I can't be sure. How about the second angle? The only thing I'm sure of here is that Altador is not in his own half. If he was, he'd be on side. He isn't, and I can't make a definitive statement based on the angle. Gonna have to trust the AR here. He's the only one with a definitive view on this play. Now, to Mercedes-Benz we go. An MLS record 72,548 people had a live look at this 69th minute challenge by the Galaxy's Giancarlo Gonzalez on Emerson Hyndman. I'm guessing they saw the same thing as I did sitting on my couch at home. Nothing really, play on. Referee Drew Fisher agreed in real time, but VAR Jose Carlos Rivero got in his ear, and rightfully so. No arguing once you see the angle from behind. The Costa Rican kicks Heinemann and takes him down. PK all day. Great use of video review. 
Let's finish off with three rapid fire takes. First up, this elbow from AJ De La Garza on CJ Sapong. Or is it high boot from CJ Sapong on De La Garza? No cards for this one, and I think that's the right call. I don't think this is an elbow from AJ. Not like Zlatan last week that I got riled up about. It's more of a shoulder that looks bad once the contact forces the Houston defender to throw his arm out to balance himself. De La Garza's arm is flush against his side until the point of contact. Next, Ronald Matarita's sliding challenge on Bofo Salcedo in stoppage time of RSL's 3-1 win against Real Salt Lake. Yellow card was given, but man, that's a red card for me. Studs exposed and off the ground, straight leg, clear contact, thankfully more glancing than flush. Matarita is flying in here. He endangers the safety of Saucedo, and I think that's excessive force. I'm going back pocket, red. Same for this challenge on David Akam. He is nowhere near the ball. He stomps on Christian Espinosa's Achilles. That is, by definition, a challenge that endangers the safety of an opponent. Espinosa had to come off. And even if he continued, I still think it deserved red. It's ugly stuff. What's up, Bobby? Great show. Oh, you're right, man. I did a good job on that one. We'll see you next week, everybody.